Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a little company that used the same architecture and the same 40 nanometers node for years. But suddenly, they went and released their 11th core i generation, featuring their new 10 nanometers node. Sadly, things went in a bad way and they had to abuse their 40 nanometers node just a little more. And that led the company's higher end chips to be hot and consume an astronomical amount of power. That company has a name. And that name is. John C. <clears throat> but not everything was bad, and their mid end chips were actually pretty good. This was today's story with Fabio Pisco, Hulk, and Black Spider Man. Let's watch some benchmarks now. For today's sponsor, we have GVG Mall where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16 and using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, it's Gameplays. I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today's video is a CPU comparison now with the new i5 11400F, so one of the i5s of the 11th generation of Intel, which is actually finally, after several years, it's finally a new architecture. In this new video, we will compare the previous generation i5 10400F versus the 11400F versus the Ryzen 5 5600X. The i5 10400F costs about $130 to $140 now, the 11400F costs around like $160 to $180 and the Ryzen 5 5600X costs around $300 to $350, so almost double the price of the i5 11400F and double the price of the i5 10400F. Now, will the price difference scale as the performance difference? Well, without any further delays, let's go to the benchmarks. See you in the conclusion. As always, the first game tested is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Unlike the previous game, this new Assassin's Creed seems to be way more GPU than CPU dependent, and that can be seen in the results. Apart from some results, all the other ones show a CPU bottleneck, being the only differences on the 1% lows. Not using SAM, the i5 11400F actually performed a bit worse than the 10400F in terms of averages, but with SAM things get reversed, and even comparing to Ryzen 5 5600X costing almost double, the i5 11400F has higher 1% lows, while having only a bit less averages. The trend is the same at 1440p and close to the same at 4K. Overall, not a noticeable difference between these CPUs while playing at anything lower than 140 average FPS.
Far Cry New Dawn is known to be heavily CPU and RAM dependent. At 1080p, the i5-10400F with a V460 limited to 2666MHz RAM can't push more than 94 average FPS, with 1% lows dropping to mid-60s. Once we get a Z490 motherboard and raise the RAM frequency to 3200 MHz, the results ramp up by 14 average FPS, which is a lot in this scenario. We can also see that the new i5-11400F has a nice performance uplift over the older generation 10400F, mainly due to the big IPC uplift. Ryzen 5 5600X is still the king here, with around 5 average FPS more than the i5-11400F, but in terms of price performance, both Intel chips are superior. At 4K we finally get GPU bottlenecked at around 90 average FPS, making us see almost no difference between these CPUs. Now with the mythical CSGO where you get to discover every day that a Russian kid banged your mother. As for results, they are easily noticed. At 1080p and 1440p we have no GPU bottleneck apart from the heavy smoke parts on the map, and any of these CPUs can easily deliver more than 400 average FPS, but Ryzen 5 5600X is definitely the king, bringing us around 130 average FPS more than the i5-11400F. Although the i5 is once again the better budget option and actually offers us a boost of around 70 average FPS over the older generation i5-10400F, which is really good. At 4K we still don't get GPU bottlenecked in all scenarios, but the differences are definitely shortened due to that. Overall, excellent results for all CPUs. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is the next title, using high settings and Vulkan API. We have the i5-10400F plus B460 combo falling behind in terms of scores, which, to be honest, is quite expected. As for the other results, they are quite interesting. At 1080p we can see that the Ryzen 5 5600X pushes around 27 average FPS more than the i5-11400F while using less power, and using SAM makes little difference due to being CPU bottlenecked most of times. At 4K we get around 130 average FPS, and since we are mostly GPU bottlenecked, the results are really really close, meaning that if you are playing around those FPS numbers, these three CPUs will perform virtually the same. Now with the Ryzen Zero Dawn using the X12 and high settings. Apart from what it may seem, this game is really heavy in terms of CPU core count, where more cores will usually grant you a better performance and fluidity. Since all the CPUs here have the same core counts, even at 1080p and over 150 average FPS, the results are more or less the same, with the 5600X usually pushing around 5 average FPS more than the others, with Sam doing absolutely nothing. At 1440p, although the results are lower, the tendency is the same, and at 4K, even with a full GPU bottleneck, we can still notice those same differences, which is not normal for most games. Overall, any of these three CPUs will play this game flawlessly. Demons walk with him. They 
fine addition to my recent benchmarks is Cyberpunk 2077 using the X12 and custom settings, basically high settings with 4 of them set to medium, in the Street Kid beginning. This game is very demanding and we have a bit of GPU bottleneck even at 1080p with 120 average FPS. Here the differences between Ryzen 5 5600X and the Intel chips were pretty small. But it is when we activate SAM that the difference goes from 3 to 7 average FPS. Those 7 average FPS can most likely be noticed by people with high refresh rate panels and it is free performance, so why not? At 1440p and 4K the trend continues, with the non-SAM results being more or less the same and with the SAM results actually being worse on the i5 11400F than on 10400F. Strange. Now with Need for Speed Heat, an excellent specimen for CPU and RAM comparisons. Here we can see once again a step forward for the i5-11400F in terms of performance. The i5-11400F Plus B460 combo gets demolished due to having RAM frequency locked to 2666MHz, but it gets a nice uplift once we raise it to 3200. Still, the i5-11400F manages to pull ahead and get us virtually the same results as the Ryzen 5 5600X. At 4K, the i5-10400F Plus B460 combo still suffers, but apart from that specific scenario, all CPUs are able to deliver virtually the same amount of average FPS and 1% lows. And I say this because a small gameplay change is enough to deviate the results a bit, hence margin of error being higher here. Moving on. The last game benchmark of today is Civilization 6, where you can actually see the older generation Ryzen 7 3800 XT spanking Ryzen 5 5600 X. If you're interested, watch the video in the top right corner. As for the results, they are expected, but still pleasant to see. The i5-10400F simply can't go past 166 average FPS in this benchmark, no matter what, while the i5-11400F shows what IPC improvement and multi-threading efficiency can actually do in scenarios like this one, getting us around 190 average FPS. Ryzen 5 5600X shows even more its superiority here, with over 215 average FPS and quite higher 1% lows than both the i5s. Although, there's an interesting thing. This is one of the few games where activating SAM actually decreases the performance, and while the performance decreases a bit on both the i5-10400F and Ryzen 5 5600X, it's on the i5-11400F that the performance decreases bigger, for example at 1080p, going from 193 to 178 average FPS. That's a massive decrease compared to the 5 FPS on Ryzen 5 5600X or the 2 FPS on the i5-10400F. At 4K the gap gets shortened, and well, if you don't play this game at over 160 average FPS, even the i5-10400F Plus B460 combo will suffice. Today's last benchmark is Cinebench, with the R15 and R20 versions. This is important so we can get an idea of single core and multi-threading slash rendering performance of these CPUs. We can see that we had a massive multi-threading improvement from Comet Lake to Rocket Lake. The single core performance was also a big jump from the previous generation, but in my opinion it is the multi-threading improvement that deserves the spotlight. Apart from the poor implementation of the arc in the 14 nanometers node, since it was supposed to be released in 10 nanometers, leading to higher power draw and high temperatures in the higher hand chips of course, it is still a major step forward in the overall performance of Intel chips. But Ryzen 5000 still takes the lead in terms of multi-threading ability, although costing way more. Let's go to the conclusion to talk a bit more about it. So guys, concluding, as you've seen in the results, 
they are pretty self-explanatory and we can see that the i5 10400F is the slowest followed by the 11400F which is the middle term uh, in terms of price performance Basically, what I meant is, the 10400F is the best price performance you can get, then the 11400F, which is still a crazy good price performance, and then the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is actually the worst CPU in terms of price performance. Of course, the Intel CPUs have some downsides, for example, the power draw. If you actually want these results, you, you actually need to unlock the power draw, and the i5 11400F, for example, will draw 140 to 160 watts while in full load, while the Ryzen 5 5600X, for example, will do like 80 to 90 watts, which is a considerable difference. But will it matter overall? I think not, because the price difference is huge. Basically, Ryzen 5 costs almost the double of the i5 11400F, and the results are pretty damn close in almost every game. And unless you have like a 240Hz monitor and you want close to that in almost every single game, the i5 11400F will be what you want to go with. And after that, uh, with the money that you actually did not spend on the Ryzen 5 5600X, you then go and buy a better GPU. That's my opinion. So, ultimate budget but still a really good performance, the i5 10400F. If you want the best budget performer, the 11400F, and if you want the max performance and lower power draw and you don't care about money, then go to the Ryzen 5 5600X. This is all for today's video, hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share it, because it really helps a lot, it helps me, helps the channel, helps everybody, and leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about these results and what you think, uh, what CPU you think it's the best price performance that you can get. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Just take a look at this, this case, once again this box. It's pretty dope actually, pretty dope. It's really, it's really sad that uh, the higher hand chips aren't actually that great, at least in terms of thermals and power draw, because this little guy is impressive for what it costs. See you in the next video.